Version Catalog is a Gradle mechanism for managing your dependencies and their respective versions from one place. Its main advantage is using it inside a multi-module projects. Instead of repeating your dependencies and their versions in a multiple different Gradle build files, you declare them in one place instead. That way, you can update your dependency versions in one place, rather than searching and checking all your Gradle build files for updates. Version Catalog is a simple file that has a TOML extension. Its default name is libs.version.toml, and by the way, it's not recommended to change the name of the Version Catalog file itself. A version Catalog should be placed inside the Gradle directory of your project, because that way the Gradle will know where to search for your dependencies. The TOML file extension uh, stands for uh, Tom's uh, Obvious uh, Minimal Language, and it's a configuration file format that uh, is uh, easy to read due to its uh, simple and uh, straightforward syntax. It's uh, often used for uh, configuration files and uh, can be found uh, in uh, various different contexts, including uh, package management tools, build systems, and more. Okay, enough theory. Let's open up the Android Studio project and let me show you how to replace your dependencies and the plugins with a version catalog. Right, so this is how our uh, project level or uh, top level Gradle build file looks like, and this is how our application module uh, Gradle build file looks like. So, uh, here as you can see now, we are declaring all our uh, dependencies and their versions inside our Gradle build file. So, let's uh, here uh, down below find uh, our uh, Gradle directory. And here, I'm going to now create uh, one uh, a folder, or actually a file, with the name of uh, libs.versions.toml. So be sure to use this uh, same name and this uh, same extension. Now here, I'm going to declare uh, multiple different uh, blocks. The first block will be for uh, versions. The second block here will be for our uh, dependencies. So let's specify here libraries. And the third one will be uh, for uh, plugins as well. So uh, let's now go back to our um, grid build file here. As you can see, uh, now let's just uh, sync the project um, for a moment. And uh, immediately after you create this uh, uh, version catalog file, inside your uh, Grail build file, uh, you will see here a couple of different uh, warning messages that will allow you to easily swap those dependencies with your version catalog file. Okay, so now here let's uh, press uh, Alt plus Enter. And we can select this uh, first option to replace this uh, with a new library catalog declaration. So press Enter. Now let's here also press uh, Alt plus Enter and Enter, and here as well. So now you will see that uh, inside our uh, uh, version catalog file, all those dependencies that we have uh, just uh, seen in our Gradle build file were transferred in our catalog here. So as you can see, all those uh, versions were automatically created in our uh, version catalog and their uh, respective dependencies as well. So this is how you declare versions. You basically type here uh, the actual name of the version. In this case, I'm using uh, forward slash to separate multiple different words. And here I'm specifying the actual version in uh, double quotes, right? Then down below, uh, I'm also using the same, the same uh, naming convention for uh, those libraries as well. In this case, I'm using uh, those uh, angle brackets, and here I'm specifying the module, which actually represents uh, that uh, same uh, dependency, and then a uh, comma, and the actual version that we have already declared uh, in this uh, versions block. So here you need to be sure that you are using the same name of that version that we have declared right here. Now there is also one more way to declare uh, your dependencies here in a version catalog, so let me just uh, show you for a moment. You can also use uh, here a group keyword, right? And that group keyword will contain uh, this uh, first part of your dependency before the colon, okay? And this part uh, after the colon uh, will be used inside uh, one more uh, keyword here, which is called a name, right? So this is also another way of uh, declaring your uh, dependencies in your uh, version catalog file. But in my case, I actually prefer this uh, first way of declaring the whole module of our dependency instead of uh, separating that into uh, two different pieces. So we can now remove this one. There we go. Now let's continue and let me show you how we can also now uh, 
implement those other different dependencies uh, in our version catalog. So in this case, as you can see, we are using a Composer Boom so that we don't have to declare uh, those uh, dependency versions for uh, libraries that uh, also are used inside a Compose. In this case, we have a UI, UI Graphics, Preview and Material 3. Now, at the time of recording this video, we are not going to see here any suggestion from the Android Studio itself about converting those dependencies in our version catalog, but anyhow, uh, we are going to do that um, manually. So let's here just uh, copy this uh, same thing, go right here. I'm going to create here now a new uh, name, so Compose uh, Boom. Let's specify here this uh, same uh, dependency uh, module. For the version here, I'm going to now specify this uh, same one. So let's just create here a new version with the name of uh, only Boom. There we go. And here I'm going to now call uh, Boom as the name of this dependency, okay? Perfect. And now let's uh, go back. We can now comment out uh, this one of uh, code from here. Let's copy all those other different uh, dependencies as well. So now we have here a Compose a UI. Let's just specify this UI without the, the version. Then we have a Compose UI Graphics. So Compose UI Graphics. Then uh, we have a Compose UI Tooling. I'm going to name this a UI Preview. And we have a Material 3 as well. So Compose Material 3. There you go. So I'm going to now uh, remove uh, all those codes uh, from here. Let's uh, sync the project. Now, instead of uh, implementing uh, all those dependencies um, in our uh, Gradle build file uh, separately, uh, one by one, I'm going to show you how to use something that's called bundles. So let's here declare uh, bundles. And I'm going to name this uh, bundle to say uh, compose. So simply compose, right? And uh, here inside the bundle, I want to specify uh, all those dependencies here that I'm going to use. So in this case, we have a Compose UI. So just specify that the uh, same name. Then we have a Compose UI uh, Graphics. Then a comma, uh, Compose uh, UI Preview. And the one more, Compose Material 3, right? So uh, we're going to bundle all those uh, four different dependencies inside a single bundle. And uh, now, instead of calling all those four dependencies from our Gradle build file, and now we are going to call only a single one, because we have grouped uh, all those uh, four dependencies inside uh, one bundle. We can also uh, modify and reformat this um, code like this, so it uh, looks even uh, more uh, cleaner, right? And now, from our Gradle build file, uh, we can now call here uh, ellipse.bundles.compose, right? And also, I'm going to here uh, specify one more block for our um, Compose uh, Boom. So let's call here a project. And here let's specify ellipse.compose.boom. Uh, uh, Sync the project. Uh, okay, so here we have uh, an error. Uh, I have forgot to specify here a platform uh, instead. So just specify here a platform and then uh, everything here should work just fine. There we go. So as you can see, now we have uh, used uh, all those uh, four different dependencies inside a bundle and uh, instead of specifying those uh, four, we have specified only a single one, right? So quite handy. Uh, the next uh, thing which I want to show you here is uh, how to declare uh, plugins as well. So uh, as you can see at the moment, we have only two plugins. So we have a Android application or a Grail plugin and we have a Kotlin as well. So let's copy this first one. Here I'm going to say uh, Android application. Here as a ID, we need to specify that the same ID and we also need to specify a version. So let's declare here a version. Android uh, Grail. Open up this uh, project level Grail build file. So that's our uh, Android Grail version. And we also need the uh, Android Kotlin as well. Or just a uh, Kotlin. So 1.8.20 in this case. Let's specify the Android uh, Grail uh, right uh, here. And down below we need Android uh, Kotlin plugin as well. So just copy this uh, string from here, paste it right here, specify here a Kotlin version. And now from our uh, application Gradle build file, we can call here uh, an alias. And within this alias function, we can now call uh, libs.plugins.android application. And the second one uh, will be uh, Android Kotlin. Okay. And inside our uh, project level Gradle build file, here we also need to specify those uh, same uh, aliases. So right there, and we need to paste uh, apply false uh, here as well. So now let's sync the project. 
And uh, there we go. So now we have specified the uh, plugins here as well. Uh, the only thing that you're going to see here is uh, one uh, warning or error that will be say that um, this uh, alias uh, can be called in the context by the implicit receiver. And that's actually a uh, well-known uh, bug at this point. And to fix that, we need to call here uh, surpass annotation. And we need to call a uh, Kotlin DSL violation. And we can also specify here a file as well. Okay, now let's um, paste that right uh, here as well. Sync the project. Uh, okay, so not a Kotlin DSL violation, but um, a DSL scope violation instead. Okay, now replace that one and now sync the project. And there we go. So now that the warning will also disappear. And now from our version catalog, we have declared uh, all those dependencies, uh, their versions, bundles, and the plugins as well. And now if we uh, create here, for example, some new module in our application, we don't have to repeat those uh, same dependencies uh, and their versions inside a new other different uh, Kotlin uh, Gradle file. And we can easily swap and actually change or update uh, the versions here in our uh, version catalog. And those changes will be applied to all other different modules that are using those uh, same dependencies. And the last thing which I want to uh, mention about the version catalog is that uh, at the time of recording this video, there is no an explicit uh, warning from the uh, Android Studio IDE itself that the new version is available. Instead, what we can do, we can open up, for example, our um, uh, file here. Then we can open up uh, the project settings or the project structure. And from this suggestions uh, tab, we can see and uh, check out uh, what kind of uh, versions we can actually update uh, in our project. And there we go. So be sure to comment down below and let me know uh, what you think about this uh, version catalog uh, itself. And of course, don't forget to like this video, but only if you find it helpful. For this video, that will be all.